In this video, we're going to set up the very beginnings of our web page. And to do this, we're going to use some tables to kind of define where we want the information to show up, whether it's text or images or the menu. Now, having looked at the storyboard on previous pages of the course, you'll notice that what we did want is we want it to, and I should uh, do this with this. So at the top of the page, we know that we want to have a place here where we're going to put in the sort of a graphic that says classic and vintage motorcycles. So we'll define a spot with that. And we will create another place here where we're going to, I'm just kind of freehanding it here, but have buttons that will allow us to go to different pages. And then down here, we'll have a little bit of text in this area here. We'll put an image in here somewhere. It won't be this big, but we'll define a spot for it. And at the bottom, we'll have a place for our copyright information, uh, web, you know, your contact information, stuff like that. So to do this, we could just simply go into Composer and start typing stuff in, you know, leaving a spot here for, and centering it, leaving a spot here for, um, the graphic at the top and stuff like that. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to set this thing up so that we'll have a web page that will have a width that is less than what you're looking at here. It'll just keep things simpler for what we're trying to do. So at the very top of your page, hit enter once just in case we want to get back to the top. We'll have a spot to go back to. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up tables. Now, there's a whole debate about whether or not a website should have fixed widths, meaning that some people view websites with a screen width of 800 pixels. Some others have 1,024, 1,280 pixels, and, and up from there, 1,600. So uh, it looks different on everybody's page unless you set it up for less pixels. Now, there's also a debate over whether or not you should just set up tables so that they adjust, automatically adjust to the page width, uh, which is 100% typically. But what we're going to do, we're going to use a fixed uh, width. And so this will just make things a lot easier for you. So what I want you to do is to follow these instructions. So now that you know that we're going to put sort of a spot here and a spot here and a spot here, this is what you're going to do. We're going to insert a table. The top table here will have one row and one column. It'll look like this. That'll be where we put the graphic in. We'll worry about the layout here after. Right. Um, over here, we're going to throw in that table that will have five columns. Now, we may decide that we want to have a buffer zone in between each one here, so we may end up end ending up uh, adding new cells in between here just to create a buffer zone but we'll worry about that in a second the third spot if we take a look here it's where we're going to put in the uh, text information so we'll create a table here too now the thing about the table is yes they have borders right now but we won't worry about that we're going to make the borders invisible so that when the visitor visits our page they won't see that it's an actual table and another one here and another one here at the bottom for our uh, copyright information. Now any of this can be changed. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a width of 950 pixels. I kind of went in between here. It seems to be a pretty accepted width. And so to do this we're going to change the width of this table. Notice that it's 388. Now that's 388 plus the borders plus what we call the padding on each side. So the text can't really touch the border. So there's a little bit of padding here. So add it up. It's, it has a width of 400, but what we're going to do here is we're going to right click. We're going to set it up for 800 or sorry, 950 pixels. We'll go to right click table cell properties. We'll go from cells to table here and we'll change the width from 400 to 950. Notice that we could also pick percentage of windows and make it hundred, but we're not going to do that. And there's our border, there's our spacing and there's our padding. So we'll click OK. We'll do the same thing with this table. Right click, table cell properties, go over to table, change it to 950. Keep in mind, this is great. You can pause the video anytime you want or skip ahead now that you know what you're doing. I could also, instead of right clicking, I just double click 
click on table, 950, oops, click OK, we'll worry about the cell alignment later, 950, so we're setting up sort of a template here for where our information is going to go, based on our storyboard. We'll end the video with this, and in the next video we'll start adjusting the table. So now that we have the table set up, the next step is to, well, we're going to start popping in some information here and uh, adjusting the tables as we need to. So here we go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set this up for uh, so that it'll be in the middle of people's pages, not on the side. Now, if you want to see what this thing looks like so far, you can click on Browse here. What it'll do, it'll open up your default browser. It'll ask me to save it first. It'll open up your default browser. In my case, it's uh, Internet Explorer. And this is kind of what it looks like now. It doesn't look great. But you'll see what happens here as we start adding information. So I'll just close this for now. And here we go. This is where we're going to have... Uh, whoops. I don't want to do that. That's not exact. This is where we're going to have the uh, graphic. That'll say custom and vintage motorcycles. So this is what this spot's reserved for. What we're going to do is we're going to set this table up so that it is centered. Don't use these buttons here. That works for um, well, that works for the content itself within a table. What we should do here is we should double click, click on table. Table alignment will be center. Apply. OK. We could have done OK as well. Do the same thing here and do the same thing for all of these as well. So I'm going to do one more and then you can uh, pause the video and do the rest. Table, center, and OK. And so you can pause the video here, and I'll do the rest. Okay, now that you have this done, what you can do here is we'll, we will use the center part here. Table cell properties. We want the stuff in this cell uh, to be centered. So we'll go to horizontal, left and right. So we'll make it center. Click OK. You'll notice that the cursor is blinking here. For now, I'd like you to type this classic and vintage motorcycles. If you want to hit enter, that's fine too. Okay. If you want to change this and make it bigger for now, that's fine too. So what the, the goal here is we're going to put it in a graphic here. That would be the smart thing to do. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to set this up so that the um, menu items will show up here. Now what we can do here, whoops, what we can do here is we can select all of these cells, right click, Table cell properties will stay with cells. Horizontal will make it so that it's centered. And so instead of, oops, not quite centered, is it? If it doesn't work, we'll just do the, uh, we'll do it the other way. We'll do it one by one. Apply, OK. May not work, so that's no big deal. We'll just use this. Composer can be finicky sometimes. But what we'll end up doing here, instead of creating the padding, when we create our own little buttons, uh, we won't have to create sort of columns in between here. So let's just set it up for the menu as it is. We'll have home here. Don't worry about the width. We'll worry about that after. British. I'm typing it in uppercase, but you can do it however you want. We're going to end up putting in uh, graphics here instead as well. Now notice that the table, the cell widths are changing. So what we want to do is we want to have it so that it's uh, consistent. So I'm going to select all of them here. I'm going to go to Table, Cell Properties. I'm going to go to Table here. And see, we have 555. Five, five. OK. Click OK. We'll worry about the width here in a bit. 
over here is where we're going to start typing in our text. So my text was something like this. It was welcome. So do this, and you can skip ahead. So it's not much of an introduction, but again, maybe we'll center this. Whoops, come on. If it didn't work here, no big deal. We can right click, table cell properties. We'll make the cell so that it's horizontal. Nope, it'll be centered. There we go. And what we do here is that I want you to start messing around with fonts too, too much. Uh, fonts that are accepted for the internet are the ones that you see here. When you get into these ones down here, there are many users that don't have these fonts and it'll revert back to something else and not look the same. So I'll just change it to Helvetica Arial. Maybe I'll increase the size. And if I want to sort of split this, instead of hitting enter like this, I prefer hitting shift enter. It creates a soft break. And so I've got a little bit of a site here. Now I'm going to save it just to make sure that I don't lose what I have so far. And we'll keep, we'll put something in here. Now, of course, part of uh, web design is finding the images that you're looking for. So you'll end up doing that. I'm just going to go to table cell properties here and make it centered. And we'll just put, this is where the image will go. And down here is where we're going to put our copyright information. So we shall do that. Table cell properties. We'll make it so that it's centered, I guess. And we'll put in a code. Now to put in a code like this, uh, you'll notice that we have insert characters and symbols. And we'll put in the copyright symbol here, which is what we have already set up. Copyright 2014 maybe put in your name, a couple of spaces, and maybe your email address. Now we'll adjust that later so that when a person clicks on it, they can, uh, it'll open up their Outlook. I prefer having it like this as well because a lot of people use Hotmail, Gmail, and the rest and prefer to just, you know, copy and paste it into their uh, email program. So we have the, the makings of a uh, web page. I'm going to stop the video here. The next video will come back and we'll adjust this. And we'll put in the uh, icons that I've already, the buttons that I've already created.